If you explore off the beaten path while on Kobo, you may find this underground High Republic facility with a number of screens inside. This is the Alignment Control Center, and it is home to a very powerful upgrade for you completionists out there. But the way to unlock its secrets is shrouded in mystery. Not bad for an abandoned facility. That's why we're here to tell you what you need to do to solve the mystery of the Alignment Control Center. To get to the facility, head to the hill located close to the stables in the Untamed Downs. Walk through this doorway, cross the gap to the nearby elevator, and descend. Inside the facility you'll notice these seven screens, all sitting here side by side. If you get in close you'll notice that they sort of look like map locations on the monitors too. These screens are each linked to one of the Jedi Meditation Chambers that are scattered around Kobo, one of which you fall into at the start of the game when looking for spare parts for the Mantis. Completing a Meditation Chamber will turn the corresponding screen from red to green. Wonder what this is, buddy. To find and complete all seven chambers, you need to complete the main story up to your third required visit to Kobo. You won't be able to access every chamber until after you have completed the main objective during that visit. We'll show you where each meditation chamber is located, which skills you need to have unlocked to get to them, and a quick guide to finding the solution for each one. This must be the structure Toa told us about. As we said just before, the first Jedi Meditation Chamber is part of the main story. This is the chamber where you discover Z and the tuner that will allow you to open all of the other Meditation Chamber doors on Kobo. Follow the main mission waypoints once you've rested in the Cantina to find the Chamber of Duality. You complete this chamber by throwing these orbs into their receptacles to create bridges before accessing the Force Essence located in this little tower. This will give you the Resilience perk, which increases Cal's block meter. The Chamber of Reason is in the Basalt Forest, which is the first area you visit after opening the large gate to the Forest Array. When you meet Toa by the fire, she will give you a rumor to go discover the nearby chamber. Don't worry, I'm a friend. Ah, oh, Mother of Moons, that's a relief. Unlock this shortcut. Clamber up these vines. Run across the broken bridge to the dangling rope. Swing across and walk inside. This chamber is like the first, but a bit more puzzling. You need to use these orbs to create bridges, but now there are also switches that move the locations of the bridges. To start, grab the first orb and create a bridge on the right side of the platform. Walk across, break the wall and grab the second orb. Move the bridge across again, then carry the second orb to the other side. Ride the elevator up, and put the orb in the receptacle. You can either run across the faulty bridge for some collectibles, or walk across the solid bridge on the right hand side. Grab the nearby orb beneath you and put it into the slot in front of you. Now use the switch to raise the platform. Take your nearby orb, throw it over to the nearby gap to make one more bridge before you claim your prize. The dexterity perk you unlock makes your lightsaber throws deal more damage. The next chamber requires you to have access to tamed Nekos after completing the Forest Array mission. In the Untamed Downs, near Fort Carlin is a broken down ruin. Use your Neko to give yourself a boost to the vines above. Then climb on top of the ledge to find the entrance to the Chamber of Clarity. This chamber is all about these blocks that you can push and pull. Pull this first one and jump across. There are also some collectibles hidden in the gap where it came from. 
pull this beam down from the roof, and then pull this viney block across to the wall. Then pull the block from the other side before immediately jumping onto the vines and riding it all the way across the room. This next room is a little bit tricky. First, send back the block you rode in on by pulling it again. Then, in this adjoining room, pull the block from the wall. After this, walk over to the grate to see the first room that you were in and pull the first block back into the current room. It should hit the second block that you pulled and stay there. Now pull on the second block and quickly climb the vines, jump onto the top and then jump across to this walkway. Follow the path around until you can walk across the block that we placed here earlier. Jump into the next room and push out this loose block. Then walk over to the grate and pull the first block back into the main room once again. Jump onto the loose block on the ground, then to the beam, and then onto this first block one final time to reach the end of the chamber where you'll unlock the Fellowship perk. This is an expensive perk, but it does add an optional BD1 stim. This next location is a bit more secretive than the others. You can complete this on your second visit to Kobo after you've solved the Devastated Settlement Areas puzzle with Kobo Matter. From the Grand Courtyard Meditation Point, using the Relta, glide over to the opposite side. And direct the Beam of Light down to this lower ridge. Now fly down there yourself. Take out any pesky droids that you see and ignite the Kobo Matter inside to find the Force Essence. This will give you the Ambidexterity perk, which temporarily increases your lightsaber damage after you shoot an enemy with your blaster. The main missions don't take you this way for a while, but once you can get past green force fields, this chamber is open to you. Behind the cantina is an entrance to Foothill Falls, which leads to the Mountain Ascent. Just past these first force fields is a drop down to a lake with a nearby waterfall. Behind that waterfall is the entrance to the Chamber of Detachment. Start by pulling the block out from the far side of the room. The block will pass over this pressure plate which will lower the platform at the end of the room, but we can't use it just yet. Grab the orb that was revealed behind the block and throw it into the receptacle behind this spinning gate. This will shoot a Kobo Matter Beam, but only when the spinning gate is in certain positions. Using BD1's Kobo Grinder, you'll need to place Kobo Matter on the movable block in order to burn the Kobo Vines on the near wall. This is the only way to get the purple fire to these vines, as the wall that connects to the beam is circled by water, making it impossible to cross with the flame. Create some sizable Kobo Matter targets on these two sides of the block, and then pull it towards the beam. It can look a bit glitchy, and you may need to refresh the Kobo Matter, but once it ignites, make sure it hits the vines. This unlocks the use of another block. Send the first one towards the elevator, but make sure you're standing on the pressure plate to stop it early. Now, pull the second block to fully push the pressure plate down. You may need to push and pull on the block to keep the elevator fully lowered. When the elevator is down, push the adjacent block onto the platform and then send the remaining block towards it too. Stand on the pressure plate again to stop the second block prematurely, creating this makeshift staircase for you to use to get to the Force Essence. This will give you the Patience perk, which restores some health every time you use your slow ability. These last two chambers require you to have all upgrades that you can acquire after completing your third visit on Kobo. 
from the bog outside the Luka Hulk, use Force Lift to raise this pillar. Follow the path and jump onto the nearby zipline. You'll need to swap ziplines halfway down, so hold L2 or left trigger to slow BD1 down before you get there. Drop and grab the second zipline, ride it into the bog and walk under the nearby archway to find a grappling hook target. Now simply follow the makeshift path up to the entrance to the Chamber of Connection. Inside we'll be placing orbs and using BD's Kobo Grinder. First, step on the plate at the far side of the room and pull the orb out. Place it in the receptacle in the middle of the room to create a beam. Using BD's Kobo Grinder is tricky in this room because of the water, but you can trace a path from the wall across this dirt path to the nearby vines. Walk inside and wall run to the above path. From here, jump to the top of the archway in the middle of the room. These plates move the wall pieces in a way that lets you bridge the Kobo matter from one side to the other. Set a path on fire and draw it across the panels that close across the first gap. Then, while the fire is still lit, run across to the second plate and then bridge the path over to the far side of the second group of panels. This should be enough to open the main pathway. Run across the exposed beam, climb the wall, and then walk around to the other side. Open this door to find the other side of the walkway that we unlocked earlier. You now need to trace a line of lit Kobo matter from the back of the room, through that side passage and up to the balcony. Then grab the orb from the middle of the room and place it here to activate a bridge. Quickly start placing more Kobo matter so you don't lose the flame and trace it across the bridge and up to the final doorway. Inside is a new perk, Recuperation which increases the minimum level that your force meter can regenerate to. This final chamber is near Rambler's Reach, but you can't access it until you have Force Lift and Slam. This large building sits towards Dredger Gorge, where you initially crashed the Mantis at the start of the game, if heading from the Cantina. Wall jump up this passage, Take out the nearby droids on the roof. Open up the hatch and drop into the corroded silo. Follow the platforming challenges down as you descend. And then once you've cleared the enemies at the bottom of the elevator, make sure you open this shortcut door nearby. Then turn around force lift this wall and jump across to the bottom of the silo where you'll enter the final test, the Chamber of Fortitude. This is a unique chamber as it acts as a combat arena for you to fight a lightsaber wielding raider. They're quite aggressive with a number of red unblockable attacks. Watch out for their grappling abilities and get your hits in where you can. Once you defeat the raider, grab any collectibles and then find the nearby force essence to gain the persistence perk which gives you some health restoration for every enemy that you defeat while using your slow ability. Once you've completed all seven of these tasks, head back to the Alignment Control Center and we can claim our prize. 
with all seven screens now turned green, activate the panel opposite them to unlock the map upgrade for finding upgrades. This will point places out on the map where you will find force essences, so you should be able to track down every perk, perk slot, skill point, health boost and force boost upgrade now. Oh, and if you're worried about this room with the spinning turbines, don't worry about it. This is somewhere you have to come back after you unlock more abilities from the main story. For more on Jedi Survivor, check out these 19 things the game doesn't tell you, or you can find all of the other map upgrades with our full written guide. And for everything else Star Wars and gaming, keep it here on IGN.